Precon gang, for the last however months or weeks we've been talking about Summer, I have been hyping up Summer Saren, Summer Makoto. However, I have not hyped up another unit that really, really deserves the hype. We'll be talking about her today, Summer Kari. And so for that, I want to say I'm sorry. Please accept my apologies. Uh, hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Princess Connect video. And today we're going to be talking about the new Summer Update, Summer Part 2, essentially. And then we're going to kind of have like a 2.5 rerun. And so to kick things off, we have the lovely Wolf Makoto getting a Summer variant. Summer Makoto, let's get right into her evaluation because she is one of the most important CB characters, like Big Claws, CB only. And very soon, we will see exactly why. So let's hop into the skills, starting off with the Union Burst. With Summer Wolfen Blitz, she inflicts large physical damage to the frontmost enemy. However, if there is only one enemy on the battlefield, then the following effects apply, where she would deal increased damage and she will inflict large defense down physical. And so it is almost identical to like your normal OG Makoto. However, the OG Makoto can inflict a large physical defense down on any unit without any conditionals. For Summer Makoto, we do have the one enemy conditional. Moving through to skill one, we have Aqua Crossing, in which there is another conditional. So she inflicts physical damage to the frontmost enemy, very much like your hard slash. However, under the same conditional, she will get a damage increase as well as a moderate physical defense buff at scaling 30%, which is honestly quite good. And then coming through to the skill two, we have the conditional yet again. Apply a medium physical attack buff to the user. However, if there is only one enemy on the battlefield, then this buff is going to persist until the end of the battle. That, I, I don't know, man. It kind of sounds like she a boss killer to me. However, if her specialty is boss killing, facing one enemy on the battlefield, this means that she is going to have a lot less utility in like the Lunar Tower, in the PvE, in Arena, and all of these places, which is why I'm saying that her talents are pretty much localized to clan battle. Before we move on to the skills and the attack chains, I do want to mention that this buff persists until the end of the battle. And what that means is that if this is recasted, it means that these buffs will stack. So they will infinitely stack until the end of the battle, which makes her a cracked out physical attacker under the correct conditions. And so with that said, let's have a look at the EX skill. If it's not physical attack, I want to go, I don't know, I'm going to do many bad things. Physical attack, that is very, very good. And then attack chain down here, two into one, into auto, auto two, into auto, into one. And so like I just said, the skill two under the right conditions, the one enemy, this is going to buff you for 180 seconds. And then skill one, auto attack, auto attack. This buff is going to also last for 180 seconds. And then you can see how it's going to multiply, right? One loop over here, we're going to get another buff again and then another buff and then hopefully by the end of the battle you will have stacked up like freaking i don't know eight buffs or something so to summarize in terms of boss killing and physical dps summer makoto 100 wins over normal makoto however in terms of defense down and the debuff utility normal makoto is certainly going to still be around she is not being replaced for like maybe another year or something and so with all of that being said should you roll for this gorgeous wolf i think you hopefully know the answer by now if you are a cb tryhard if you are like t10 t25 potentially t50 then certainly consider rolling for summer makoto however and this is a scenario that i've seen a lot of people get into if you have to choose between summer makoto and nanika because nanika my guys she is coming in about a month and a half probably about six weeks i would estimate from now my quick evaluation of nanika is that she is a superb all-rounder unit you'll find her in luna tower you'll find her in arena you'll find her in cb she is going to be everywhere my advice, especially if you are a little bit more casual, is probably save for the Nenika. She is going to have a much larger impact than the Summer Makoto. However, with that being said, you can technically get Nenika again about like maybe four or six months down the line on this New Year's Kiaru banner. Whereas for the Summer Makoto, you I think have to wait for an entire year for the rerun down here. And so yeah, I know a lot of you are in this situation and welcome to all of you new players. I think for some reason there is a major influx right now. But that, my guys, is my take on Summer Summer Makoto versus Nanika. I think it's going to be Nanika here. All right, and so that's enough for the Summer Makoto. Let's come back over here and see what's next. We have the uh, Summer Tamaki and the Summer Suzume. So what's going to be happening here is that Summer Tamaki and Summer Suzume are getting a rerun. And with the rerun, they are also going to be getting their UEs, similar to Summer Kiaru and Summer Pekarin. Summer Tamaki is a powerhouse. However, she's not like Summer Makoto powerhouse. She's not like Summer Saren powerhouse. She's not like Christina or Muimi powerhouse. 
She's more like a Shiori or like a Susana Yui. She's more like a Kaori or maybe like an Oninon, uh, like kind of like a Jita. And what I mean by that, in the context of CB, you're always going to have a Makoto. And chances are, you're probably always going to have a Christina, possibly Erika and Muimi. Outside of that, you might not actually use Jita, you might not use Shiori, although you probably use a lot of Shiori, you might not use Kari, and these are kind of replaceable. Sama Tamaki is kind of like that. And so what I'm trying to say is that if you are down bad in gemmies, you do not roll on this banner. You do have the Neneka coming up and there are a lot more other goodies. In terms of Summer Suzume herself, she is okay. She's like a healer that summons a golem and they do cool things together. But aside from that, uh, low priority, unfortunately. And yes, like I just mentioned before, they are going to be getting their unique equipments alongside some other characters. I will evaluate them in another video. And so with that said, let's move on to another one which is going to be the dog days in Maho Maho Kingdom, a soulful seaside summer. This is going to be our new part two summer event. And so my guys, in the entire year of welfares, I would almost argue that this is probably the most important one where we are going to be getting a summer Kari. So my guys, let's do a quick evaluation on summer Kari and you'll quickly see why she is so cracked out. So her union burst is her real juicer where she inflicts medium physical damage to multiple enemies within range. This skill damage increases based on the number of enemies that are hit by this skill. So in terms of the scaling over here, I believe it's about 15 to 20%. I don't know the exact percentage. And what I mean by that is that if you are hitting one enemy, you'll be doing 100% attack. If you are hitting two enemies, you'll be doing 115% damage. If you're hitting three enemies, you're going to be doing 130% damage and so forth. And so if you can think of a place that constantly has five enemies, kind of like arena, you can almost see the value in this skill. This skill is actually very, very similar to Tomo's skill one with UE, where the damage dealt increases based on the amount of enemies hit. And so you're starting to think cleave. And that, my guys, is exactly where Summer Kari is going to thrive. She is going to cleave. She is going to chunk all of the frontliners and midliners because she herself is a midliner unit. But on top of that, she is also going to thrive on multi-target units where each of the targets counts as an additional enemy. And so, my guys, I've just given you three pieces of really, really critical information. The first of which is that she is a cleaver. The second of which is that she is a midline unit. And the third of which is that she is dependent on this UB to do giga giga damage. Because Samakari is a midliner and she is dependent on the UB to really, really function and be optimized, you are going to be using her with Saren. OG Saren because she is probably very, very close to her. And then because she is a cleaving unit, kind of like your Halloween Shinobu, your Ninon, your Reno, your Mimi with UE, she is going to pair very, very well in Arena with Lima. Lima is going to get Samakari closer to the enemy team, which means that your range of cleave is going to be super, super big. And so before we move on, I did want to give you guys a quick sneak preview of the Union Burst. And it's this one over here. You can see it's going to go... Uh, yeah, that's that's, that's kind of it, right? <laughs> All right, and so the skill one and the skill two, they're not as spicy as the UB, but they certainly support it. So she gets the heartbreak wave on skill one and she inflicts physical damage, medium physical damage to multiple enemies. That's even more cleave damage. But the more important part is that she is going to knock back the frontmost target. What that means is that she is going to compress the team and hopefully be able to reach the back even further. And then moving on to her skill two, she is going to increase her own physical attack and she is going to increase the the action speed to allies within range. Action speed buff. Holy crap. Unfortunately, this wiki doesn't actually have the scaling for the action speed buff. However, what I can tell you is that it is at 35%, which is honestly utterly cracked because if we think Monica, that's 50%. If we think Kokoro, that is 20%. If we think Summer Saren, that is also 50%. 35% on a skill two, that's pretty nice, man. And so enough cooming about Summer Kari's core skills. Let's have a look at the EX skill, physical attack. If it was anything else, I don't know. I'm just saying. And then looking at the attack pattern. We have a fast skill two into a skill one. That means that everybody right off the bat is going to get that action speed buff. And then from there, she is just going to be a menace. She's going to knock people back. She's going to auto attack. She's going to buff them again with a freaking action speed buff, which remember guys, it does overwrite. It doesn't actually stack. And so what that means is that this guy, the skill two in the initial pattern is going to get overwritten by the first one in the loop pattern if it makes it up to there. From there, however, it is going to go from skill two into auto, into skill one, skill one, and then auto, and then back to a skill two, hopefully for a 
very, very high uptime on that action speed buff. And so it's with this kit and a lot of the explanations that I've shared along the way in terms of like her utility in Arena, she's gonna find a lot of use in Lunar Tower, she's gonna find use in the multi-target CBs. It is for these reasons and the fact that she is certainly a welfare unit that I would highly, highly recommend you at least four star her and for a lot of the top tier clans you're probably going to be asked to five star her and i know my guys i know it feels bad wasting either da's or copious amounts of gems to refresh for her but she is going to be worth it she is going to be used quite a fair bit if you guys are more chill i would recommend going to four stars at least and seeing if you really do need her to go to five stars and then and only then pushing her through because if i tell you guys to five star her and then you guys don't end up using her it's kind of like a waste of resources right so get her to four star at least and then if you find yourself using her a lot then consider five starring her for more hardcore clans your fates are probably dictated for you like it is for me <laughs> all right my guys and so that is summer kari in a nutshell and let's have a look at the different shards oh this is it this is it oh this my guys is the kasumi shard event we're going to be getting 20 plus 30 plus probably a little bit more of the kasumi shards from this freaking event oh my god oh praise and for you newer players remember that there is the event quest player exp times 1.5 which is fantastic because levels means power in this game we do have new unique equipment coming out for kasumi for ruka and for nanaka however i will cover it in another video with the summer ones back up top and then moving down we have new furniture over here which is fantastic and i do believe we are going to be getting a rerun of some of the older furniture. The summer furniture is very, very nice. Okay, okay, okay. And let's have a look. We got Grotto Quest times two. We got Sanctum Survey Double Drop. And then we got Dungeon Drop times two. That's really interesting because this kind of looks like almost a different schedule than what we just had. And what we just had wasn't exactly the nicest thing in the world. So hopefully this will get us back onto the double drops for normal and hard modes right before CB. The one thing that I don't see here that I'm still kind of expecting is the Nanaka addition to the, I think it was arena shop or dungeon shop. I can't remember which one, but to the shops, right? And I think at this point, it doesn't really matter anymore because she's probably been phased out of meta, but it would still be nice if we could get the Nanaka shards considering her UE is literally about to come out. I don't know. It's okay with me. I'm pretty chill about it. It's kind of whatever. However, with that being said, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. You know what time it is. Secret question time. My fellow precon degenerates, are you going to be pulling for the Sama Makoto? And if any of you are in the dilemma of Sama Makoto versus Nanika, did I help you make your decision here? My guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, then please consider leaving a like on the video, uh, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. But otherwise, my guys, as Sama Makoto once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.